High in the far north, at the highest point where United States soil meets the sea, are the nesting grounds of one of the Arctic's most iconic species, the snowy owl. And it's here on this desolate landscape that Denver Holt of the Owl Research Institute has been collecting data for the past 27 years on the life history of these magnificent creatures. The Snowy Owl Project is a long-term study, the longest ever undertaken in North America, to find scientifically documented answers, to understand the changes taking place, and how they will affect snowy owls and their main source of food, the brown lemming. The brown lemming, this is really what drives the system up here. But this is what drives the whole snowy owl relationship, is the brown lemming. And so, they're, like I said, their populations fluctuate widely. But a neat little animal, I'm gonna let them go here. But this is what drives, and when the lemmings are high, everything does well here. You know, the Jaegers do well, the foxes, the weasels, even the ducks and the shorebirds have better years because everything's eating lemmings and not preying on eggs and chicks as much. I read a lot of the literature before I came up. I knew for sure that if I was gonna study snowy owls, I also had to study what they eat, lemmings. You know, it, it was common knowledge at that time that when lemmings have a good year, snowy owls have a good year in various geographic areas throughout the Arctic. So I knew that, okay, if I'm gonna study snowy owls and make this any kind of good study, then I would also have to study the population fluctuations of lemmings. Initially, the basic overall question was, okay, what's the relationship or the predator-prey relationship between snowy owls and lemmings? And how does that relate to a variety of other things, such as the number of nests, the number of eggs laid, the number of chicks produced, the number of the chicks that make it to the fledging stage. So within a season and also over many seasons. And in order to have a study that at least you hope will stand the, the test of time, you want to you immerse yourself in a long-term study. And I think that myself, personally, as well as the Owl Research Institute, which I founded years ago as well, that's one of our missions, is if we're gonna take on a study, we wanna do it long-term. And if you're to study snowy owls, you have to study lemmings. And if you wanna study lemmings, you just can't do it for a couple of years. We now have a study that this year, right now as I'm speaking, is in its 23rd year. So we now have 23 years of data on snowy owls and lemmings, their relationship. And, and we can see how, how the populations fluctuate. And it's only once in a great while that you have these highs in a lemming population, which result in high breeding numbers of snowy owls. Another reason to emphasize the importance of long-term study. You know, most studies in wildlife today just last a few seasons. You need to study these things for long periods of time. And, and so we could have a flat line almost for lemmings for three, four, five years, and all of a sudden, boom, it takes off. And then it's down, then it's up again, then it's down. And so you're not gonna see that in you know, one, two, three, four, five years. You have to look at that over time. The snowy owl is truly at the top of the list of beloved icons of the far north. Its charisma and regal nature bestow upon it the notoriety essential for grabbing the attention of all mankind. The Arctic is changing faster than any place on the planet. All the Arctic animals will benefit from the long-term science and dedication the Owl Research Institute has poured into studying the life of this majestic bird. The Arctic and snowy owls need your support. Donate generously today. Support the Snowy Owl Study with the Owl Research Institute.